Television of the 1950s is often called the golden age of television. It was a time of innovation, discovery, and excitement. There was an explosion of creativity as producers worked to fill the insatiable appetite of the American public. Television in the 1950s was still a relatively new medium. It was fun and it was magical. And in an era of one TV households, the entire family would often gather in front of the TV to watch a show as if it were a major event. There was programming for every taste. Kitty shows, comedy, drama, variety, and adventure. they're running into. Quick, after them. Faster, faster, they're following us. Are they on the beach, boy? Yes, Captain. They won't get far. Go on, both of you. We can't leave you here, can't Go we? on when I tell you. Get out to the others. Well, that was a wild trick, Countess. You knew I put you ashore as soon as I could. I did not choose to wait. Come, my lady, back to the ship. You think I will be safely imprisoned there? Behind and everyone on board will be at the bottom of the ocean before dawn. And how is that going to happen? You will find out. What's the girl talking about? This wild story about the ship. I'm not so sure it's so wild. Diego, did you get the others? I am sorry, Captain. I didn't. But you're not taking us seriously. What could she do? A girl like that, she might do anything. You better search the ship. But what for? Search the ship. Aye, Captain. Diego, bring the Countess here. Aye, aye, Captain. Captain Wancho. Come on, now. When a child has been beaten at some game, she makes up a fine tale of her revenge, an air in nothing to puff up her spirit. We call this whistling in the dark. Save your breath, Captain Drake. This is no air in nothing. The kind will have gone before dawn. And the world will know that the English dragon has been defeated by a girl. And who will tell the world, Countess? Don Antonio? I shall tell you nothing. Except that you and all your crew shall die. I think not. Just in case there is any truth in this little fantasy of yours, we will take no chances. Diego, tell Trevelyan to man the boats. I want everybody taken across to the swan before dawn. Everyone, Captain? That's what I said. See to it at once. Aye, aye, Captain. Now what will the world say? The Captain abandons his ship? Not entirely, Countess. I will stay. Brave, Captain Drake. And so will you. I? Yes, Countess. Just we two. We will man the ship together.
Where will the sun rise? Over there. How much longer? Time enough to save us both, can't it? I can't. It is for Spain. It is for your own foolish pride because I've taken you prisoner. It is not that. How will it help King Philip that you should die? Because you die with me, Captain Drake. It cannot be right to forfeit so much, Countess. Wealth, youth, beauty. These things pass. You are very beautiful, you know. I shall never tell you. Countess, how accurate is your timing? Our end must be very close. The sun! Let me off this ship! Let me Not go! Not until you tell me how to save her! Oh, no! Cousin Inez! Pedro Consuelo, how are you here? We heed. Diego helped us to return. We like it here. What are we to do? You must tell me, Countess, quickly! Oh, it is too late. <laughs> What is it? Where is it? Tell me quickly! In my cabin, there's a fuse leading to the magazine. to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Room 14 was on the third floor in the front of the building. Frank and I approached the room and listened. There was no sound from the inside. Only matches the description. Yeah. Let's wake him up. Now, come on, Moore. Wake up. Leave me alone, Charlie. I don't feel good. Go away and leave me alone. Come on, Moore. Get up. How many times... Who are you guys? What are you doing here? Police officers. You're under arrest. Okay, get up. All right. Let Stand me alone. Still. I'll do like you say. Just let me alone. Oh, I ain't done nothing. He's clean. You got no reason to push me around. All right, come on. Let's go. Where? Where are we going? Downtown. What for? Manslaughter. I didn't do it. You got the wrong one. I didn't do it. Come on, let's go. But you got the wrong guy. I didn't do it. I didn't know what you wanted. That's why I ran. I didn't know what you wanted. Well, you do now, so let's go. The suspect was taken to the squad room where he was questioned. He refused to admit any part in the crime. He was confronted with the physical evidence and with the ownership of the hit-and-run vehicle. The witness to the crime came into the office and said that Gregory Moore was the man she'd seen at the wheel of the car when Helen Chapman had been run down. Throughout the interrogation, the suspect refused to say anything. Where is he? I know he's here. I want to see him. I'll take it easy, Chapman. I heard you call him. I want to see him. I want to tell him. Is that the kid? We think so. Are you the one? Are you the one who killed Helen? Well, answer me. Take it easy, Chapman. Is he the one? The evidence points that way, yeah. Please. I want you to do something for me. What's that? Please, get out of here. Go away, please. You know we can't do that, Chapman. This man's in custody. Please, leave me alone with him. Come on, Chapman. Squad side. Just a minute. Listen to me, kid. 
When they put you in that cell, you get down on your knees and thank God they found you before I did. You understand? You thank them, and every day you live, you thank them. You do that because I would have killed you. All right, Chad. My wife's dead because of him. You hear that? You killed her. They got laws to save people like you, but none for her. None for her and my baby. They didn't have any laws. None for them. Come on. Pretty upset, isn't he? I want you to remember something. Yeah? In the years I've been in this department, I've seen some bad ones, real bad. Teenage kids that didn't know any better, scraped up off the pavement and sent home to their parents. Drunks that were too loaded to know what went on. It's been a lot of them go through here, but you finish way ahead of the field, boy. You talk good. Bet you're on a lecture team around here. I'm getting fed up with you kids roaming the streets in those death traps of yours. I don't care about you. You want to wrap yourself around a post, you go ahead. We'll try to stop you, but don't you take somebody else with you. We've tried about everything in the books to make you understand. Doesn't look like any of them did any good. You all through? No, not quite. You killed a human being, a woman who didn't even know you. She never saw you until it was too late. You threw a ton and a half of metal at a 120-pound woman, and then you ran away and left her in the gutter to die. You wrecked a family. You tore it right down the middle and rolled over it. You've ruined the lives of all the people around that woman. You gave a group of decent kids a bad time because you stole their name. Now you get up on your feet and keep that smart mouth of yours closed, you understand? Can I ask you something? Make it quick. Running that woman down, how much will I get? I don't know, but it won't be enough. Come away to the land he loves so well. It's a boat, be a boat, and the way we go. shot. I knew you could do it. There is one thing I would like you to tell me. Why did you conceal an arrow in your shirt? You have promised us our freedom. I have promised. If I killed my son, I would have killed you too. I promised you your freedom in respect of your crime against the Emperor. There is now another crime to be considered. You have confessed that you plan to murder one of His Majesty's high officers. The penalty is imprisonment for life. So much for an Austrian promise. You need not think that the rest of your days will be wasted. You shall help to build the defenses of your country. If I lift one stone, it will be to smash an Austrian head! He can join the rest of the draft. Take him away. I can't refuse. Now kill me. Ah, come on. Come on. The other one is a willing worker. <laughs> Fritz, stand clear. Get up. Now get against the wall. Get on your feet. Get up there. Stay against the wall. Take their swords. Back into the courthouse. <laughs> now, Landberger Gessler, we're going for a little walk to the town gates. You won't escape. I've sent for Bowman. They fire one bolt, you're a dead man. To the gates, Landberger. Oh, let me go! Let me go! Good luck. If you should escape, we meet our neighbors at Lucerne four nights from now. I'll be there. Now then, one door in front is a shield, one to guard our backs, and we're on our way. Gates, you 
fools. you gentlemen what is this I believe you have something I want doctor I'm a very reasonable man doctor but patience has its limits well, the collar isn't here where is it I don't know Tell me. violence will not replace the lost collar since all of us are most anxious to recover same I got my hand half bit off trying to get it. Nobody's going to stop me now. Oh, you had your hand bitten by the dog. Hold it, Toma. What's your interest in this, mister? In the interest of public health. A doctor? My reason for being here is to investigate a case of rabies. Have you ever seen a case of rabies, sir? What has rabies got to do with this? The collar you are looking for was covered with rabbit saliva. You mean... That dog had rabies? Oh, yes. And very contagious. Any small cut or sore will permit the germs to enter the bloodstream. If immediate medical care is not given, the victim dies in... Horrible agony. What happens to a man who's been bit by a dog with rabies? Well, your throat gets dry and your face gets flushed. Then your throat swells. There's extreme nausea with stomach cramps. Then suddenly, you develop the classic symptoms of hydrophobia. Great fear for water. Terrible convulsions come just before the end. Is he right, Doc? Yes. Use your head and stop getting panicky. That's what Doc can play it very nice, huh? Westchester Animal Hospital. No, no, she's not here. We sent her home. Uh, we had a case of rabies here. Rabies? Yes, uh, I think you can reach her at home. Her number is capital 2435. Yeah, capital 2435. Thank you. I want rabies treatment. I want it now. I don't carry any serum. <laughs> then you better get it. Doctor, I have brought flowers for the Senorita Sheila for her magnificent gift. 
Oh, excuse me. Get over there. And shut up. Si, sí, senor. They're trying to throw a scare into you. I'm the one that was bit. Just get off my back. Level with me, Doc. Has that dog got rabies? Would you care to look in the mirror and see for yourself? You have all the symptoms. Dry mouth, sweating, flushed face. Do you have a mirror, Doctor? Well, yes, I, I think my nurse has one someplace. Uh, oh, here it is. Leave it there. You, you, get over here. it by instinct. You are starting to get a headache. Soon you will have cramps and in one hour your throat will swell. You are getting sick to your stomach and want to drink. But the sight of water will make you scream with fear. Shut up! As you wish. Get on the phone and get the serum. I got that phone. Keep out of this. I'm running this now. But look, Captain, I can't handle a homicide and fill out 400 forms. I only got one pair of hands. Oh, hold it. Wait a minute. Homicide, Norman. Dr. Chan. Look, Charlie, what is this doctor business? Will you quit kibitzin? I'm busy. Call me later. Hello? No, no, uh, I didn't mean you, Charlie. I mean Captain. Uh, what? You say you gave the collar to Juanito Sierra? Yeah, 1409 Second Avenue. I've got that. Oh, excuse me for not coming over personally, but the doctor said you got rabies. See, that, that's too bad. What's keeping them? Let him in. I'll do. Pop, I found the collar. Yes, yes. The nurse gave it to a kid called Juanito. Very good. Oh, that is me, senor. Well, there it is, the missing collar. Most interesting. What's your interest in the collar, young man? Well, I'm a detective, sir. A detective? Oh, and your father? He's Inspector Chan of the... Uh, well, keep talking, keep talking. Listen to him, Toma. Maybe this will cure your rabies. Yeah. I'm getting cured fast. Real fast. Oh, you're gonna pay for the sweat you gave me, doctor. Let's get on with the job, Tom. You keep out of this. This is my play. I got a little more chacho. <laughs> Kindly point gun other way. Nervous finger could kill Pop. Okay, Charlie, we'll take him. Here you are, officer. Did you find the collar? It's right here, Lieutenant. Juanito, would you bring your nice dog here, please? Up, Senor Gordo. Oh, Senor Gordo. Si. Very nice name. Lieutenant, you might say we found it right under Senor Gordo's nose. Diamonds. No wonder that dog was so hot. Who owned the stones? The blind man? No. Illegal entry of diamonds suggests criminal ownership. And hijacking a blind man disproves old saying, honor among thieves. Was the cinch the real owner's not going to claim him now? True. Smuggled goods are now property of U.S. Customs. Be a nice reward for you, Charlie. No, Lieutenant. 
reward for finding same would be most useful gift for education of young Mexican friend. Senor Gordo will gladly share the reward with me. Very democratic. done all he can. You can call off your guards. When we are sure that my brother will recover. Can you be trusted? My personal ambitions are my heart's secrets. But my promises are witnessed by Allah. If my brother lives... He'll live. While we wait, you may rest in a room that has been prepared for you. Under armed guard. They won't let me check on the sheik's condition. I have a pretty good idea. What's that? I can't be sure. But I think the sheik's brother would be happy to see him dead. I've brought you food. How is he? Still alive. But I fear for him. Does he have a fever? It's not his illness I'm afraid of. It's his brother. I've seen Chergui looking at my husband, wishing him dead. Is he with Moulay now? The guards will not let you pass. Does that wall lead to the balcony outside your husband's chamber? Yes. I'll be with you. He lives, yes, but not for long. You will kill him? No, you will. Have you not told all the people of the village that the Sheikh will surely die? But the people will think that you have lost your skill if he lives. I will do it. must not live. I know.
Shit! the impossible, of course. What is it for the Pimpernel to throw off the mask of Judge Amer and assume that of Madame Cassis? Is there anybody there? Hey, there you! Oh, the goddess of reason bless us. Citizen Chauvelin himself. Ah, so I am known in these parts, Oh, eh? citizen, you are quite notorious. <laughs> you must not leave our house without having a cognac on the house. <laughs> I have reason to believe that the English criminal known as this Carter Pimpernel may have been here. May still be here, in fact. Oh, citizen, I was always terrified of men, Englishmen, ever since I was a girl in Boulogne. Is he here? Has he called here? This is not the house of call, though it is called the Red Cow. Is he here? Certainly not. Then I must press on to the next village. He will have to stop somewhere to change horses. Oh, but citizen, no. Not until you will have my potage Normandy. Oh, you no, must no, no, tell no, it to my potage Normandy. No, 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 I insist. Nobody ever comes to the Red Cow without tasting my potage Normandy. Well, I suppose a few minutes, one way or the other, can make very little difference. Excellent. Truly excellent, but uh, is there not rather a lot of brandy in it? <laughs> I always put cognac in my potage, just a soupçon. <laughs> to the glorious revolution. What about my soul, dear poire, citizen? With uh, anchovies and uh, just a little mushroom sauce? No, I regret there is no time. Oh, but my poulet. Oh, my poulet. You must taste my poulet. My poulet is the speciality de la maison. You must have it. I insist. But to Citizen Chauvelin, a riding boot was a riding boot. And brandy was brandy. For unlike Elise, Citizen Chauvelin had no imagination. Now, you have never tasted anything like this before, citizen. Oh, chicken. Chicken with mushrooms. And with saffron. <laughs> you know, citizeness, anyone might suspect that you were trying to get me drunk. say. <laughs> <laughs> I have a toast to propose. <laughs> to the downfall of the Scarlet Pimpernel. Not quite such a good disguise this time, citizen. You forgot those great feet of yours. Oh, citizen, forgive me. I was pressed for time, and I did underrate your intelligence. <clears throat> you had better surrender now, before I run you through. <clears throat> oh, no, citizen, no. This is taking an unfair advantage. Catch! It 
Is it Scarlet Pimpernel? Hey, where you are? Mercy! But these are my Sunday clothes! Forgive me, madame. Forgive me. It was necessity. Oh, monster! Oh. And what has he done to my beautiful chicken? Bless him. What did you say? I said, what has he done to my chicken? Curse him! Man, the woman, help me out of this! Oh, my poor little cabbage! <laughs> Who's coming? I can't see yet, but hurry it up. The ring, Professor. <laughs> With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. And I do plight unto thee my troth. And I do plight unto thee my troth. You may go to Sheriff. Simply tell you, I'm the ten's death. Quest of all of it, both you are, and simul dominaris. Time's up. Bid each day, bid each day. Bless you, my children, and farewell. Go straight on down the road till you come to the sign of the Blue Boar. I'll meet you in the stable behind the inn. Thank you. You and Friar Tuck. Now, just kiss the bride and start running. Um, finish the rest of that in the wood. Now, go on, run. We must give Harold and Mildred a chance to get away. Help me draw the sheriff off. Father. Uh, good day, my lord, Sheriff. What have you done with Sir William? Sir William, my lord, he went home. Who were those two who just went out to the back? The newlywed couple, your worship. Sir William changed his mind about the girl, my lord, so I married her to her lover. You what? It was Sir William's suggestion, my lord. In fact, you might say he ordered me to do it. But he couldn't have ordered you the girl belonged to me. Oh, excuse me, my lord, I'm just a simple friar. But when a knight with a great sword orders me to do something... Is this the one you said was so insolent? Yes. What has happened to Sir William? Uh, he cancelled his arrangement with you, my lord. I'll find out about that from him. In the meantime, I want my wench back. She's a runaway. She's married under unbreakable sacrament. You can't do anything about that, my lord. I can discipline her. Also, the fellow who's trying to take her away from me without my permission. I think an example should be made of this case. Don't worry, it will be. Farewell, brother. Thank you for the rest and refreshment. Which way to Malden Abbey? Straight on across the stream and then take the left-hand path, brother. Pax Wobiscom. Et Wobiscom. Pax. The devil is that? Well, never mind about that. Will you please get your men after that girl? I couldn't tell you who he is for sure. He came here pretending to be another friar, but he acted more like an outlaw. If you want my private opinion, I think he's Robin Hood. You're quite right, my lord, but with that girl... The devil makes you say that. I beg your pardon? What makes you think he's Robin Hood? Oh, little things. Like that. It is Robin Hood. After him, men. No, wait. To horse. What about my wench? Confound your wench. Yeah, he's taking my horse. Hey! <laughs> Listen, 
I'm no crackpot, but I'm going to be a murderer in another five minutes if you don't listen to me. I'm telling you, there's a bomb in that suitcase. On flight 217. Flight 217 has cleared the field. Bring it back. There's a time bomb aboard in a black suitcase. Baggage ticket 4720, Rural Miami. Rush fire trucks and ambulances to flight 217, runway 2. Advise crew and passengers to abandon flight 217 as soon as it is down. Control tower calling flight 217. Control tower calling flight 217. Flight 217 control. Emergency order. Turn back and make an immediate landing. A demolition truck will remove a bag containing a bomb from your luggage compartment. The bag is black leather. Claim check number 4720. Repeat. Claim check number 4720. Be right back. Attention everyone. This is an emergency. All personnel is ordered off the runways and field. All others please remain within administration building. I repeat, this is an emergency. What's going on? I know the manager. Let's find out. Alfredo, what's happened? That idiot smuggled a time bomb aboard a plane. Which plane? Flight 217. Flight 2. Pam. Boy, you. Hold it, Jerry. Hold it. If anything happens to Pam, or... <laughs> Taxi driver. <laughs> They must have given me the wrong suitcase. Dios mío, ¿quién explotó mi taxi? ¿Quién puso esa bomba en mi, co en mi coche? Oh, qué suerte. Oh, it's a tough break, amigo. Sí, porque yo era el taxi driver más rápido de todo México. <laughs> yes, he says that for just one little moment, he owned the fastest moving taxi cab in all of Mexico City. <laughs> Go! 
Sire, with your permission, I would spare the life of this great knight. Sir Gawain and I have no real reason to be enemies. But did you not kill Sir Gawain's brother? Sir Darius and I fought as honest knights, each defending his king. Sire, I must explain. I am the son of King Ban of Benwick. When I was 12 years old, my father lost the war. Before he charged into that last hopeless battle, he made me swear an oath. I swore to seek my father's friend, King Guile, and serve him as a true son. Thus, when you, King Arthur, fought King Guile, I found myself arrayed in battle against the Knights of the Round Table. But when you come here seeking to join the Round Table, are you not betraying your sacred vows to King Guile? During the battle, King Guile was badly wounded. On his deathbed, he released me from my oath. Then I came here, free at last, to serve the cause that has for so long been closest to my heart. Quickly, bring the leech to tend to the wounds of Sir Gawain. Knights of the Round Table, I order you to assemble in the Great Hall within the hour. Can anyone offer reason why Sir Lancelot should not be accepted as a Knight of the Round Table? My lord, I feel that force is powerful and mysterious are about to show us a sign. Observe. Neil. I proclaim you, Sir Lancelot of the Lake, a Knight of the Round Table. By custom, you are entitled now to ask one boon, which I will grant, if it be in my power. Sire, a knight is not yet fully armed until he wears the favor of a lady fair. Certainly, you have the right to champion a lady and dedicate your deeds to her, when you have chosen. I have already chosen, sire. I would champion Queen Guinevere. I'm sure the Queen Guinevere will take great pride in being championed by so noble a knight. Otto killed a man. It was a mistake, but he killed him for me, trying to get money for me. You do understand, don't you? Yes, I am. I understand. You mustn't think Otto's bad. Otto's good. You should have seen him when I first met him. When was it? 25, 30 years ago? You should have seen him. He was so strong, so handsome in his leotard. So innocent. <laughs> that was my auto. He was never meant for this fault. Stealing and killing. I did this to him. Now there's no turning back. Not for Otto, for me. Only more stealing, more killing ahead. Uh, Liebchen, <laughs> we are almost packed. Yes, Otto. You were in that closet. So in that closet, what of it? Oh, but don't get so excited, Otto. There's no need to get so excited. She knows, don't you, dear? What does she know? Oh, so many things, like... Like why poor Anne's clothes here, or... She went home, things like that. And I told her. The truth? Everything. Oh, it was so nice to tell the truth. So cool and pleasant. Made me feel good. Why don't we all have a nice cup of coffee? 
There's nothing like coffee. Yeah. Let us have a nice cup of coffee. It won't take long to heat up. Oh, get away from that window. Oh, you want to give a signal, huh? Oh, you are working with the police. I know it. Ever since the beginning, at Gately's, when you took that wallet from that man, I knew something was wrong. He did not even chase you out into the street. <laughs> now I know you were setting a trap for me, and I walked into it. I don't know what you're talking about. You question my wife about Anne when she needs a fix, and you question her when she is high. You are working with the police now, huh? Tell me. Oh, Tell me you are working with the police, yes? Killing me is only, only going to make it worse for you and for Lily. That's true, I am a cop. Oh. Now think, just think, Otto. There's nothing you can do about it. Listen to me, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, yeah, there is no escape. Oh, I knew it would come. It, it would happen. I have been waiting. But now, what will become of my lily? At the top of the tent, she was like a star, shining in the sky, shining light, beauty. It's nothing like a cup of coffee. For you, dear. Here's one for you, Otto. <sighs> this will make us all feel better. Thank you, Lily. <laughs> Drink yours, dear. It will do you good. Finish yours for me, Otto. Lily, what's in this car? It is excellent coffee. The best you ever made. Lily, answer me. What's in this coffee? There's nothing in yours, dear. Only in Lily's and mine. And there's nothing anyone can do. The time had come, my sweet husband. I love you. Oh, I see you, like a star in the sky, shining, shining, hiding. <laughs> No. Yes, I guess he did. A long time ago. Long time ago, I learned the way to live with these people is to keep your nose strictly out of their affairs, religious or otherwise. And I'd advise you gentlemen to do the same thing. Well, thanks for the warning. But as long as we've gone this far, we intend to find out more about it. That's right. A girl and sober Morty are somewhere near. My conscience wouldn't let me abandon her. Well, as long as you won't heed my warning, I'll join you. That is, with your permission. The more the merrier. There seems to be some doubt in your mind, Dr. Reynolds. Oh, it, it's nothing. Come along. I know this jungle, so I'll take the lead. That'll be fine. I think we'll take the left fork. 
Odd decision, Doctor. Left fork won't get you to the grove. I think it will. Oh, but Mr. Roper ought to know. I don't deny that. It still doesn't change my decision. Well, have it your own way. You'll find you're wrong. This is the altar of the god Nakihama, my child. You must stay here until he comes for you. I thought you said this trail didn't lead to the grove. All right, I made a mistake. So what? Sabata. Sabata. Sabata, wake up. Assassin! Get your hands up, Roper. Nice work, Howard. What do you do with the girls, Roper? Sell them into slavery? Wouldn't you like to know? I think I already do. I do know that camel caravans with slave traders pass this way headed for the back country. You're getting too smart for your own good, Reynolds. You're the one who'll be too smart for your own good when we turn you over to the authorities. I deeply regret that I misunderstood your motives, Sahibs. I see now that this man whom we trusted has proved himself unworthy of our esteem. I think we'll find him a lot more unworthy once we've had a chance to look over his place back in the hills. The drug you gave her is wearing out. You better take her back to the village. Accept my thanks again for showing me how misguided I have been. Now you owe us no thanks. Absolutely not. It's enough to know that we had a part in saving these young ladies from some harem on the other side of the path. May all that is good go with you. And good luck to you. Wasati Benamora. You know, Tom, right now I can think of three pretty good reasons why a man would like to have a harem. You mean four, don't you? Four. You forgot Sabata. Ah. <laughs> Rocky Jones. Space Ranger. Space Ranger. How long do you think the conference will last, Rocky? Well, Dr. Tyson said about 72 hours. That gives us plenty of time to go to Paratane and back. In fact, we should have a whole day there with nothing to do but sleep. A day off and you want to sleep? Those Earth fools will repent the day they fail to invite the officials to the Interplanet Conference. Rocky? Yes, Fina. 
We're approaching Space Station X07, sir. Check. Tune in the visiograph, Winky. XV2 calling Space Station X07. Come in, please. The orbit jet to Space Station X07. Come in. Space Station X07. Andrews speaking. Come in, please. Andrews, this is Rocky Jones in the orbit jet. Approaching Space Station X07 with classified cargo. When we get within range of your magnetic couplers, notify us to turn off power so you can pull us in. We'll call. Out. Out. Well, Winky. We're nearly there. Can't be too soon for me. Magni, I hope you realize how important this assignment is to our future. Operation Surprise, go ahead. Rocky Jones has contacted Space Station X07 and will land shortly. We've been keeping out of scanning range, awaiting your orders. Now listen carefully. I'll tell you as soon as the orbit jet leaves for Paratane. When I call back, you're to move in on the space station immediately. There won't be a second to lose. Well, I don't think we should let the orbit jet get away. I think we should destroy it once and for all. I'll do the thinking. You obey orders. Is that clear? Orders will be obeyed. Out. I can't thank you enough. We can all be thankful we arrived safely. And ahead of schedule, too. This means you and your crew will have more time to relax at Paratane. We'll see you here in three days, sir. And uh, good luck on the conference. Thank you. Don't forget to come back in 72 hours. Right. Goodbye, gentlemen. Bye, Rocky. Bye, Bye Rocky. Bye. Too easy, Bobby. That kind of take off as kids play. I meant for passengers, but for pilots like us, give me a blast off any day. <laughs> XV2 calling Space Station X07. Come in, please. X07. Notify our destination of approximate arrival time. Yes, sir. Out. Quinky, when we get to Paratane, I think I'll catch up on my sleep. Not really. You haven't closed your eyes for so long, I'd begun to think you didn't have eyelids. I wouldn't have interrupted, sir, but you refused to talk with anyone else. This is Dr. Tyson speaking. Come in, please. Dr. Hillary Tyson? Yes. Dr. Tyson, we have a barrage of warhead missiles aimed at the space station. Who is this and what do you want? I will introduce myself when I arrive. Order your space station operator to guide us in for a safe landing at once. Or I will destroy the entire island. But I'll give you 30 seconds. If you do not cooperate, we'll release the barrage. Be with us next week, same time, same station, when we again take you into outer space for further adventures with Rocky Jones, Space Ranger. At last, I found her. Richard Costas. Well, that be his name, ain't it? Yes, yes, but how... Ah, you say he jilted you. 
Why, woman, he, he loved you with passion to the end. End? Ah, he died with your name on his lips. Richard died? Ah, an hero's death. He and I were shipmates. He was sailing home to you when our ship were boarded by pirates and Richard was slain. Oh. Ah, but just as his eyes were closing, he says to me, Honor, ear. Honor, ear, he says. And his head fell back on my shoulders dead. Harry, it must have been close to Christmas, at nigh on 20 years ago. But, but why didn't you come and tell me? Uh, oh, well, now, uh, as to that, uh, you see, I stayed aboard too long, uh, all on account of your Richard. Uh, I gave him a, a sailor's burial, uh, and then I were taken by them pirates. Oh, it did for many a long day afore I escaped, and uh, when I did, well, all I knew of you was the name uh, Honor here. Yeah. He did love me. Oh, he loved you to the end. Father Christmas with toys for all. Father Christmas, did you hear? Did you hear what I wished, even if I am an orphan? Uh, uh, well, uh, now... You remember? I wished that Miss Willoughby would be kind to us. And so she will be from now on. Forgive me. Please. Merry Christmas. And now for the presents. For Miss Willow. Ja, I never heard anything so romantic. How rich and dying in your arms. <laughs> but uh, he ain't her Richard. You mean you never knew him? I knowed him, but he ain't her Richard. And he ain't dead, neither. Long John. Uh, uh, now, now uh, it'll be all right so long as Miss Willoughby stays away from Bonaventura. He be living there with his wife and eleven children. Detective.
Okay, Chase. Let's have it. Wait a minute. Where are you going? To get the black book. You know it's not in there. You want the book, don't you? There's nothing in that closet. Oh, you never can tell what might turn up in a closet. You surprised Blake's not in there? He left a little while ago. You're a liar. Of course I'm a liar. You knew that Blake couldn't leave that closet unless he was carried out. What are you talking about? You killed Joe Blake. Don't bet on horses, Chase. You're a bad guesser. No, I'm not guessing. You were awfully sure there'd be no little black book in that closet. How come? Stop playing games. You killed Blake, shoved his body in that closet, and then phoned the police. You knew what was in that closet, all right. And it wasn't a black book. You know, Mr. Chase, I'm going to miss reading your column unless you hand over the book right now. All right, let's have it. This is going to surprise you, Baxter, but I haven't the faintest idea where that black book of yours is. What? Go to the door. See who it is. Watch your step. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Chase. I don't wish to appear persistent, but uh, excuse me. Very glad to see you, Hubert. Oh, I'm glad to see you, too. Well, as I was saying, Mr. Chase, th there's simply no room in my little cubicles downstairs for all your mail. W what if all my tenants wanted me to hold their mail? Gosh, I, I wouldn't have any room for, for anything. So I just thought I was going off duty. I'd bring them up. And I'm sure you'll find everything in good order. Your, your messages and your, and your packages and, and, well, everything that's there. So, good night. Good night, Hubert. Oh, gosh. Gee, I just thought of this. Your little black book. A special messenger delivered it to me last night. So, so there. Well, as I always say, render unto Caesar what Caesar. So I, I brought everything up. So I hope I did right by bringing it up. Oh, you did fine, Hubert. Fine. Well, I'm glad that you feel that way. So I hope I didn't intrude. Not at all. Good, Good night. night. Good night, Hubert. Good night, Mr. Chase. Thank you, Mr. Chase. And now... Drop it. Put them out, both of you. Good work, Keeley. Take it easy, Keeley. We can work on this together. Work together? You make me laugh. With this, I can wipe you out. We'll amalgamate. <laughs> Are you kidding? Don't take any chances, Keeley. Don't be a sucker. This man has a murder rap hanging over him. The police will take care of him. You know, maybe you have something there. That's a good idea, boys. Let the police handle it. Study, Dave. Oh, boy, am I glad to see you. Huh. What is this, old home week? There. What is it? The reason Blake was killed. What? There's a list of all the books operated by the Transcontinental. Enough to keep the Vice Squad busy for a year. And you can book Baxter for Blake's murder. Say, how did you happen to come up here, anyway? You can thank Mrs. Blake for that. Mrs. Blake? Good grief, I almost forgot... Oh, Mrs. Blake, I'm I'm terribly sorry about your husband. Well, it was it was bound to happen. Tell me, uh, how did you happen to get it? Yes. How did you manage to get out? Your secretary. Dora Bell. Yes, she huh. got worried when you didn't call back, so came rushing over. Good gal. Okay, you mugs, come on. I got a whole honor guard waiting for you downstairs. Stop in at headquarters if you get a chance, will you, Dave? Maybe you'll be able to fill me in on the details. Sure thing. My sympathy, Mrs. Blake. Okay. Well, you better go with the lieutenant, too, Mrs. Blake. And thank you very much for your cooperation. Goodbye, Mr. Chase. Goodbye. Hello? Mr. Chase, are you all right? Dora Bell, of course I'm all right. Where are you? Where do you think I am? One guess. All right. One guess, Mr. Know-it-all. <laughs> At the office, working overtime. Oh, you're so right, Mr. Chase. As usual, Mr. Chase. Good night. Good night. That's what I like about a secretary. Always on the job.
there are no keys in there. On the shelf at the back. by now. One's lying on the bed and one's on the floor. That's the reason that door has been locked for all these years, more than a century. So what are you gaping at? Give it to me. Help me, Professor, please. feeling this morning? I couldn't be better. I slept like a baby. <laughs> That's more than I did. I don't know. It's as, it's as though she were completely normal again. Well, she is, don't you see? Yes, but what happened, Professor? Well, yesterday, the crisis came when there was no second body in that room. Had there been one, had the wife not escaped, there would have been no child, no descendants. Look, uh, I've been doing a little research. This is a very learned and very dull history of Hohenhausen. I bought it in the marketplace. It's all about the town, the castle, the family. Listen. The Counts of Hohenhausen had always claimed that they possessed the feudal rights of trial and execution in their own domains. As late as 1811, Count Goetz von Hohenhausen was rumored to have killed his wife and her alleged lover. There was an investigation, as these two persons, the Countess Louisa and her lover, had disappeared without a trace. Count Goetz, the husband, refused entry to the magistrates and said that his wife and her lover had departed together. And that was all he knew. Yes, but I still don't understand why she got away and he didn't. What's all this got to do with you, darling? I don't know. You see, a child was born later. Mrs. McNamara, did your people originally come from Germany? Way back. I thought so. If the lady in the castle hadn't got away, your wife wouldn't be sitting with us now. You must be the lady's descendant. But, but, Professor, how did... Well, we... Mr. and Mrs. McNamara, it's a beautiful day outside. And don't forget, you're on your honeymoon. It's supposed to be sightseers. Uh, would you care to keep this? What's the idea? I got a phobia about being caught in hotel rooms. I got a phobia about guns, too. Now, there won't be no competition. Talk business. 
You're not going to talk business with that gun on me, are you? You wanted to meet me, didn't you? This is the way I meet. All right, where'd you do? I got it. As soon as you wave the stuff, I'll get it for you. First, I got to see it. Look. We can play our fronts and Gaston all night. I got the dough downstairs where I can send for it. Well, let's wave the stuff, huh? All right. Go ahead and weigh it. It's right there in the bag. Hey, what is this? I thought you said the stuff was in there. What kind of a crazy game are you playing anyway? Just being extra careful, Moresby. I've been in this racket a long time. I had to make sure. Of what? Already sent one of your guys down to give me the third degree, didn't you? One guy ain't me, Moresby. I gotta make sure I ain't played for some sucker. If you did turn out to be a treasury guy, you wouldn't have no evidence. Well, now if you're through playing games, shall we go get the stuff? All right. You come with me. Pick up your money downstairs. Well, you'll get the stuff right now. You get some of the stuff out, Mickey. I'll answer the phone. Hello. Oh, yeah, Sam. Where are you? You're supposed to be over here. Now, look, Rich. You got that guy from the hotel room with you? Yeah, good. Now, look, don't go through with that deal. No, I just found out something about him. I think he's a copper. Yeah? Oh, Rich, it's the truth, I tell you. He never did work for Tubby McCleary out on the West Coast. No, no, I just bumped into Tubby's old girlfriend. She says there never was any such guy in the whole outfit. Okay, Sam, thanks for telling me. I'll take care of it from here in. Something wrong, Rich? No, not a thing. So this is how you get the stuff in, huh? Must have somebody working for you on one of the boats. Yeah, that's right. What does he do, take off one of the panels and shove the stuff in with legitimate shipment? That's right. While well, you're out at sea, yeah? <laughs> Pretty smart. What's the idea, Moresby? Huh? Don't move, mister. Just got a tip you're working with the law. Tie him up, Mickey. Are you crazy, Rich? Tie him up, I said. This big-time customer of yours is a phony. I don't get it. Somebody's giving you a bump steer. Yeah, then suppose you start talking. About what? About the McCleary gang. You never worked for that outfit. Why'd you say you did? Well, I kind of had to, didn't I? I mean, I, uh, I'm kind of new around here, and I had to give Mickey some kind of a story in order to make a contact. As a matter of Shut fact... up. I don't want to hear any more of your bum lies. If you ain't a cop, prove it and prove it fast, because you ain't got much time left. Oh, wait a second. How can a guy prove what he ain't if you ain't giving me a chance? Oh, that's just too bad. Drop your gun, Keller. Drop it or you won't live. We're customs officers. We've got the place covered. Okay. Okay, don't shoot no more. I won't give you any trouble. Drop it, Keller. Stevenson, hit the lights. <sighs> Time's just about right, Duncan. Another couple of minutes would have been a couple of minutes too late. Get this for me, will you? Stevenson covered you leaving the hotel. It wasn't too hard to follow the car. Besides, we knew when they had taken the crates. All right, boys, take them away. Oh, yeah. 
You sure tied up like long pig. I'm going to make a long pig out of those tin soldiers. Give me that balloon. No, no. Must get Captain Grief. Me know where they take Wainis. Right you are, Jackie. Come on, follow me. David, what was that? Oh, mice, probably. <laughs> Holy. Jackie, come on, come on. Get me loose from here. Come on. No, no, my wrists are numb. How do you think I feel after that tin soldier tried to pack my skull with that pistol? No, oh, your head always was numb. Oh, all right, all right, I'll take it back. Come on, unloosen me. Come on, Mr. Snow, we got work to do. Let's get into action. Do you think we can get over side without those swabs hearing us? Well, we're going to try it. Goldie, up top side, we'll create a diversion. Soldiers are asleep now, Captain, for sure. Mr. Snow, you stay aboard and tie them up. Where are you going? For sure, to settle a few accounts. We got no guns, what do we do? And Riley has, eh? He's also got the girl, we gotta find him. I know where they take Wayne. See you in time, up. I'll go on ahead. Now, let me understand this. By dawn, the boxes would be loaded. The rattler would be at sea, and the governor will remain as my guest until I receive word that you have landed safely with the gold. How about the girl? The senorita stays with me as a hostage. It would be my life if anything goes wrong with the plan now. If all goes well, you'll be as rich as the king of Spain. What have you got to lose? Only his head. Where was that? Go see what that is.
Senor Riley, come quickly. Fernandes, where are you? Here. Send the captain away, Father. How fortunate you did not succeed. When I've sailed over a thousand miles to pick up a charter, I don't give up that easy. I guarantee you won't, Captain. Beyond that, we are in such a debt to you that it'll be impossible to repay. Happy to have been in service. Ship's ready to sail, Captain. Tide's running. All right, Mr. Snow. Orders are unchanged with regard to the gold, sir. You are the one man I can trust to carry the gold to our treasury at Valparaiso. You will return someday? Yeah, I guess I will. Maybe even ship that giant idol of Rapa Nui out of here for you. The idols of Rapa Nui will wait for you, and so will I. I left it down by the road marker. Oh, it's all right, honey. It won't run away. We'll get it the first thing in the morning. But, Biff, it was your anniversary present to me. I wouldn't have lost that for anything. Now I won't be able to sleep a wink for worrying about it. Come to bed, honey. Biff, I'm not going to leave that camera out there all night. Somebody might take it. <laughs> now, don't you worry about a thing, honey. I'll be right back. That's right, dear. Go to sleep. Yeah? I, I've never been so frightened in all my life. Yeah? I, uh, I left my camera around here somewhere this afternoon. You, you didn't happen to see it, did you? What happened? Why are you... What happened? I don't know. He choked me. Who? That Rodriguez. Oh, Biff. No, now, take it easy, honey. All right, come on, now, from the beginning. My camera, don't you remember? I told you that I was coming back here to the road market to get it. I'm sorry, honey. I must have been half asleep. I don't even remember you saying that. Well, come on. When I got here, he, he was already here. He was kneeling over the road marker, and he was holding some kind of a package. A package? What kind of a package? I, I don't remember. It wasn't very thick, and it was about so long and about so wide. 
You mean about the size of a $20 bill? Yeah, sure. But what are you driving at? It's fantastic. Those must have been the plates. Don't you get it, honey? They counted for $20 plates. They were hidden under the road market there. No wonder the senor didn't want to talk about importing. And Biffy kept saying, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think he's Spanish at all. German. Why, well, sure, it figures. Rodriguez knew where the plates were hidden. And he came back to get them. Come on, honey, let's go. <laughs> it's all right, honey. It's Rodriguez. He won't bother you. Somebody took a shot at him. Who did it? I don't know, but I've got a pretty good idea. Let's get out of here. You sure you can make it? Nothing could keep me here for another mm -hmm. minute. Oh, wait a minute. Here. When I think how close this came to getting you killed. You want to rest a minute? Yeah. Here. Biff, you know who killed Rodriguez, don't you? No, but I've got a pretty good hunch. Then what's all the hurry to get back to the inn? Well, there's a dead man back there. This is something for the police. Exactly, but not for Biff Baker. I'm beginning to get the same hunch you have. Take it easy. Uh, honey, we've had enough for one night. Let's... Wait here. If I'm afraid. Stay here. Tommy! Biff! Now that it's all over, you show up. <laughs> Wait a minute, I just better make sure it is all over. <clears throat> Dead? No, he's just unconscious. Like I was, huh, Tommy? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Sorry to keep you in the dark, Biff. I'm not a writer. You're a darn good actor. Intelligence or FBI? Treasury Department. It's an old counterfeit money sleuth. Well, then it was the coming out party for those counterfeit plates that brought you here. Right. We've been waiting since 1944 for Major Tannen to return to Germany and resurrect those money plates. Biff! It's all right, honey. Meet Tommy Allen, Treasury agent. Treasury agent? One of the roughest cases we've ever been on. Whoever tried for those papers will make another try. They know you've got them. Well, who could it be? Who arranged your trip to Barcelona? Emile? It was he who... Oh, no. It couldn't be Emile. Wait. By arranging the escape and coming along, he would have a better chance to get the papers. Where are the papers now? In a briefcase, hidden behind a loose board in Emile's closet. Does Emile know? No, I felt I could trust no one. Let's go. Emile. It was he who betrayed us. Guess again, Kitty. Mitchell is right, Gilbert. Guess again. Majak! Yeah, Majak, my little playmate who wanted to help me so much to find his old friend Galba. Now I see why. I'm grateful to you for your help, Mitchell. You've been most cooperative. I thought you were associated with Majak until he caught me. He made me come with him until he followed you and Kitty here. So you were the one that dropped that tile on me. I'm glad I missed you then. And again at the window. You've been of great assistance, Mitchell. So what happens now? The obvious. You, none of you are of any use to me now. And you, Gelba, have been kind enough to divulge the hiding place of the papers. Your turn next, Mitchell. No, Majak. Me first. Oh, no, Father, no. Are you all right? Sure. But, Majak. He knows where the papers are. I thought you said they were in secret writing. You don't understand. He developed it with me. He can read them as well as I can. You take care of Emil.
That's it, Commissioner. Najak is dead. The papers have been recovered intact. Thanks, Commissioner. And Galba has been completely exonerated. Hey, would you mind moving over, Jack? I think you have the wrong party. My name is Galba. Yeah, sure, Jack. Tracking Paul. And then even as a kid, you were always able to catch me. 
Well, what happens now? Well, I'll do what I can for you, but you're going to have to stand trial for murder. And if I'm convicted, what's the best I can expect? A life sentence? That's the worst for me. I couldn't bear to live caged up all my life. I'm not going back, Paul. I'm going to walk away from you. You're going to have to shoot me. Tar! You'll have to shoot me, Paul. Master fell into a spiked animal trap. He's dead. Have him buried alongside his father. Yeah. Inspector Derrick to Nairobi headquarters. Over. Over. I have Inspector Morgan discontinue search for the debris murderer. Tell him I know who did it. I'll make out my report as soon as I get back to Nairobi. That's all. Over.